For baby boomers, this week's long gasoline lines from Florida to the mid-Atlantic states, the panic buying, the hoarding and shortages brought back painful memories of the 1970s that helped make Jimmy Carter a one-term president. It is not just gasoline shortages that bring back those memories. Consumer price index. And believe me, if you're standing, I recommend you sit down. Up eight-tenths of one percent on headline, four times expectations. Strip out the all-important food and energy, up three times expectations, up nine-tenths of one percent. Year over year, up 4.2 percent. And if you look at year over year core, up 3.0. These are staggering numbers. Disruption to cheap and plentiful oil and gas raises the price of fuel. Gasoline was averaging $2.98 per gallon as of Tuesday, a seven-year high. It also raises the price of almost all goods transported by truck, train, ship, or plane. The cost of cab and Uber rides, heating and air conditioning. Indeed, anything that derives its energy from natural gas fuel generating stations. About 40% of energy in the United States. This week... Critics say reality has inflicted a body blow to the Biden administration's near utopian vision of 100 percent clean energy by 2035. The ransomware attack has demonstrated just how fossil fuels remain vital to the U.S. and world economies. It raises questions about the wisdom of pursuing 100 percent clean energy, given the cost as well as the massive swaths of land and sea that would have to be devoted to solar arrays and wind farms, all for energy returns that are wholly dependent on the intermittency of sun shining and wind blowing. Yet the Biden administration vision remains intact despite this week's wake up call. Obviously we have the acute issues with the colonial pipeline ransomware attack, but looking more holistically in a macro view, how does this speed up the efforts at DOE to move in more of a renewable direction since this is gonna have an impact on people at the pump? Yeah, I mean, we obviously are all in on making sure that we meet the president's goals of getting to 100 percent clean electricity by 2035 and uh, net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And, um, you know, if you drive an electric car, this would not be affecting you, clearly. That is untrue about electric cars, given that electricity that fuels them still overwhelmingly comes from natural gas, coal and nuclear fueled power plants. The broader issue is a very important issue. It's an issue for the president's uh, priority in the American Jobs Plan, the issue of investing in a transmission grid, for example, so that you don't have the cyber issues associated with it. So there's a lot of broader questions in this, um, and we hope that we'll be able to see that investment in infrastructure that will facilitate clean and renewable energy. Some question if this temporary crisis is what the Biden administration may want in order to make renewables competitive with cheaper fossil fuels. It harkens back to Obama Energy Secretary Stephen Chu's comments to the Wall Street Journal in September of 2008, quote, Somehow, we have to figure out how to boost the price of gasoline to the levels in Europe. Four years later, Chu refused to retract that statement. Before you got your present job, you made a statement that you wanted to see the price of gas reach the prices that exist in Europe. Um, and those are somewhere between seven and nine dollars a gallon, depending upon what country you're in. Can you retract that statement now, or, or is that still your goal and the goal of the administration? That is not our, my goal, but let me remind well, you. Then will you retract the statement? That uh, everything I've done as Secretary of Energy is to first try to lower the prices by we're, we've invested in uh, ways to increase. Uh, production. We've invested in other ways in batteries and biofuels and energy efficiency to help the American public. Even if the Biden administration were able to keep its vow of 100 percent clean energy by the year 2035, it would be wise to mandate infrastructure protection from hacking. Wind farms and solar arrays are no more immune from ransomware than pipelines. Doug McElway for The Washington Examiner.